What began as a genius idea has turned into a real estate nightmare. The concept of short-term rentals was a simple one. Turn your home into a money-making machine by providing people with an alternative to traditional hotels. Started by a group of young entrepreneurs in 2007, Airbnb was essentially the birth of this concept. It was simple. List your room, apartment, or house on a website and let strangers book it as if it were a hotel. Originally met with skepticism, the idea took off and now dozens of companies compete in a $100 billion industry commonly named as the STR industry or short-term rental. I'm sure most of you watching this video right now have once upon a time either booked an SDR or stayed at one with friends. And while the popularity of the industry has exploded in recent years, many are changing their opinions. The truth behind Airbnb, Verbo, and all the other SDR companies is starting to come out. And now people and municipalities are rebelling. What the founders initially envisioned as a mere alternative to hotels has over the course of a decade transformed into an unprecedented concept that has come completely revolutionized the real estate landscape. This once unheard of idea has reshaped the marketplace in a matter far beyond the founders' wildest imaginations. Today, there are entire neighborhoods throughout the United States where Airbnbs alone have seriously altered prices and neighborhood dynamics. From the west coast of California to the sunny beaches of Miami, hundreds of cities have outright banned the industry from their borders, blaming speculation, crime, and greed as reasons why SDRs should remain illegal. The biggest of these problems is related to the park and profit theory that has enabled rich people to essentially snatch up properties using them as their own personal ATMs with the hope of seeing ludicrous returns paying little to no tax, taking advantage of America's relaxed laws on home appreciation income. Now the general public is finally beginning to notice, with housing affordability at near all-time lows, the anger is building. A new wave of laws, along with customer complaints regarding transparency, pricing, market Market rigging, fees, and safety concerns has sort of cultivated into this massive bubble that is seemingly exploding overnight. A lot of people are calling it the Airbnb bubble, and now there are a lot of signs pointing to a rapid demise, one that could bring down the entire housing market according to some experts. But before we examine this truth, we first need a bit of history. You see, if you ever visit a tourist hotspot like Sarasota as an example, you will quickly realize that it's not uncommon to see entire buildings with only a few lights on, as many units are owned by the wealthy and left empty, as rents are not as important as having a safe place to park surplus capital. This interesting phenomenon has led to thousands of units having been pulled from the long-term rental market to reap the higher returns of STRs. The situation in the Sarasota area is deeply unsettling. According to AirDNA, there are approximately 6,500 Airbnb listings, a staggering number for an area that is made up of 24,000 households. This means that nearly one in three homes are classified as an STR. This glaring statistic points to an alarming oversaturation, making it one of the most densely Airbnb populated regions in the entire United States. The rapid realization among affluent individuals that renting out second or third homes yields more significant profits than securing long-term tenants has set off a disturbing trend. This surge in investment has led to the widespread takeover of vast areas in the U.S. by short-term rental neighborhoods. The consequences are dire as these returns drive up the overall price perception. Coupled with the speculative nature of the market, the situation is worsened by this Airbnb craze, acting as the turbo engine propelling an unsustainable bubble, especially in places like Florida. And as we will get to later, this unhealthy speculation is overflowing into bad loans, impacting the banking industry and therefore posing a threat to the entire financial system. The looming threat of an inflated market bubble raises serious concerns about the stability and sustainability of the real estate landscape in these regions. The widening affordability crises in the housing market is unmistakably exemplified by the astonishing surge in housing prices in Sarasota. Since January 2020, while the median price of homes across the United States has increased by a significant 47%, the escalation in Sarasota has been nothing short of staggering, reaching an alarming 68%. Unraveling the details of this dramatic rise reveals a disturbing factor, the pervasive influence of the Airbnb phenomenon. This unprecedented spike in housing costs is in part fueled by what can only be described as an uncontrolled obsession with Airbnb rentals. 
The allure of short-term gains from renting out properties on platforms like Airbnb has gripped the real estate landscape, enticing property owners to prioritize transient accommodations over long-term stability. This shift in focus has created a distorted market dynamic where the quest for immediate profits takes precedence over the pressing need for affordable and sustainable housing, and you can't really blame people for doing it. Even at today's absurd prices and sky-high interest rates, there is still money to be made in many of these areas. I'll give you a real-life example that I randomly picked by scrolling through some new listings on Redfin. This here is a modest 1,800-square-foot duplex in Sarasota, Florida. It's listed for $500,000. In 2018, just five years ago, this same home sold for $157,000. Now, I'm not sure if that was all just appreciation or if there was significant work done but either way, we can agree that this kind of growth is simply unbelievable. But as you're about to see, it may not sound as absurd as you initially thought. At the end of the day, an asset is priced according to what someone will willingly pay. And as I'm about to show you, there is a real incentive for a specific kind of investor to keep pushing these prices up. And it still makes sense from a pure money standpoint. For the average person, it's a horrible deal, but today we have average people competing with what are essentially pseudo-commercial entities operating as regular people. And of course, the regular citizens are getting priced out. If you purchase this home today and put down 20% on a 30-year mortgage paying around 7% interest, your estimated monthly payment with taxes and insurance would be around $3,500 a month. This number once again sounds like a lot for a typical American family, but if we head over to AirDNA and use their property earning potential tool, we can see that according to their data, you can expect to earn around $90,000 in revenue running this home as an Airbnb. Now you might be saying, well, that's great, but you're not taking out for expenses and all the other things that go into running a mini hotel. And that is true, but AirDNA claims you should still earn around $64,000 in net profit per year at this address. And that's still well above your mortgage payment. If these numbers are true, then the cap rate on this home can be as high as 20%, nearly three to four times higher than what you can expect to earn from renting it out long term. Currently, with CD rates around 5%, you can easily see why investors are flocking to places like this and investing in STRs as they are profit making machines even at these absurd prices. The allure is centered on the significantly higher returns compared to traditional investment avenues. On top of this, the unmatched tax advantages associated with real estate investments further sweeten the deal, making it an attractive proposition for wealth preservation and growth. Now, as this gets more and more popular for rich people, what you naturally get is a wave of speculation that follows as investors recognize the potential for substantial profits in the short term rental market. The rapid rise in pricing in areas like Sarasota is a direct consequence of this influx of investment, creating a competitive environment that drives property values upwards. But the competition isn't really fair, and the consequences of this abuse may bring down the entire house of cards, not just in Sarasota, but across the country. You'll see what I mean in a second. You see, as the rich get richer doing this type of investment, people with poor finances begin to participate in this modern day gold rush as well. They see these returns and find ways to remove the barrier of entry, borrowing more and more on extreme leverage. If you're looking to buy an Airbnb or Verbo home today as an individual, you really only have a couple of options. The most simple one is to pay cash. This of course allows you to avoid interest expenses and doesn't make you slave to the terms and conditions of the loan. But with houses and a lot of these spots approaching half a million at a minimum, this option isn't available for the vast majority of people who are looking to speculate. Now, the only other legal option we have that I'm aware of is something called a DSCR loan. We will get into these a little bit later, but these loans were originally meant for things like hotels, but since an Airbnb is kind of like a hotel, they have made their way into the residential market. The problem with these though is that they carry a higher interest rate and oftentimes require a minimum down payment of 25%. So as a first option, they are often ignored in favor of something that I consider abusive to the entire real estate marketplace, and that is the regular mortgage. The primary residence mortgage becomes a focal point in the strategies employed by speculative short-term rental operators. 
It is no secret that many of these operators opt for a conventional primary residence mortgage to fund their properties. The allure lies in the simplicity of the process, a 30-year payment plan, and the ability to make a minimal 5% down payment. However, from an external perspective, especially for those outside the industry, this practice is unequivocally recognized as mortgage fraud, the conventional mortgage designed to cater to the needs of regular families in normal living conditions is thus manipulated in a way that raises ethical and legal concerns surrounding mortgage practices within the SDR industry. Conventional mortgages come with specific stipulations designed to reduce risks for the lending institution. Typically, they mandate that property owners live in the financed house for an extended duration and prohibit the commercial use of the property. Originally crafted to support the growth and prosperity of American families, these loans now find themselves repurposed for acquiring what essentially amounts to mini hotels. The departure from their intended purpose raises concerns about the ethical use of financial instruments designed to foster personal residence and community development. This form of abuse often goes overlooked by many banks and regulatory bodies, creating an environment where such practices thrive unchecked. Over time, these trends foster speculation, inevitably leading to an inflation of prices that impacts everyone. This isn't just a personal observation. A working paper from the Philadelphia Federal Reserve meticulously details the extensive scope of this issue. Originally published in January of 2023, this paper shows that some people lie about living in the homes they buy, a practice that is called occupancy fraud. This is done to get better mortgage terms. This was a well-known problem during the last housing bubble, but continues even now. The deception is widespread, happening in various types of loans, not just private ones. It is believed that about one-third of those claiming to be regular homeowners are actually investors. These fraudulent borrowers who get better loan terms are riskier and more likely to default at a significantly higher rate compared to honest investors. Their defaults are also more likely to be strategic, which means they intentionally stop paying when home prices fall. In the last 14 years, home prices have been steadily increasing, with a significant surge in the past three years. This has created a favorable environment for investors who thrive in such market conditions. However, it's crucial to recognize that if we experience a sustained economic downturn, the excessive use of abusive leverage by these speculators could swiftly erode the stability of the entire real estate market and banking system, just as it did in 2008. Now, to make matters worse, the greed doesn't stop there. If mortgage fraud wasn't enough, there are plenty of investors who max out on the regular mortgage abuse and move on to the next step in their leveraged speculation. Many who exhaust their resources by acquiring favorable loan terms move on to something called DSCR loans. Now, to fully understand just how dangerous this type of speculation can be, we first need to understand how these loans function. And while it may sound complicated, it's really quite simple on the surface. DSCR, or Debt Service Coverage Ratio, distinguishes itself as a unique category of loans, setting it apart from conventional lending structures that rely on the borrower's personal income or assets. Instead, DSCR loans are exclusively anchored in the value of the property under consideration and its projected revenue potential. So essentially, these loans can be acquired with no income and no job. They were initially tailored for commercial properties but have recently found their way into the gray area known as short-term rentals, exemplified by platforms like Airbnb. So what happens in Florida and a lot of other touristy portions of this country is that you get a lot of people who specialize in acquiring properties via traditional mortgages, just like we talked about. But once you max out your loopholes in that area, you move on into the DSCR world, continuing to leverage your way into a massive ball of debt. Debt that looks like gold when things are going well. As you just saw there with that air DNA data, even with today's conditions, it's very possible to generate a 20% cap rate on a good property. And when you consider the leverage, this number is much bigger. The cash on cash returns or the actual money you're putting down versus how much you're receiving is much higher. Thousands of people are getting very rich on paper doing exactly this. But just like all bubbles, when the music stops and the loans go underwater, their supposed riches quickly turn into bankruptcy. 
DSCRs are essentially the modern day version of ninja loans or no income and no jobs. They are given away based on an assumption of income produced by your so-called mini hotel. But this assumption is often overstated and while we haven't had a deep recession for decades, once one shows up, these properties will quickly move towards bankruptcy. Not a lot of people are going to be booking Airbnbs if or when the unemployment rate hits 8%. Today, with so much money packed into this speculative STR market, the breeding grounds for the next crash have already been established and it begins with the leveraged investor who happens to find himself in a modern day gold rush where strong STR returns are masking his complete recklessness, pushing the boundaries of creative financing, riding the line between outright fraud and risky bet. Whatever the future holds, it's pretty apparent that a single website has completely reshaped real estate and the consequences for home buyers can be felt by simply scrolling through Zillow at your local market. A lot of these prices can be explained by the wild rise in speculative investors looking to maximize profits with as little money as possible. Thank you guys for watching. As always, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it. And let me know what you're seeing in your local market, especially if you live near these Airbnb hubs.